Good, how are you? Lou was out there waiting in the cold for half an hour. Lou, Lou we oh, you're kidding me. Wow. Guys sitting at the desk, they said they told, they told them 6.30. Huh? So we're trying to go to left hands at six o'clock. Well, the meeting started at six o'clock. Like, hey, I need a badge. They were like, no. <laughs> All right. Well, they didn't make us go through today. Really? I yeah. guess not after they did that one. <laughs> yeah. Bill and I went right through. Yeah. You're known entities now. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> I don't care. So. How are you? Last meeting. This is the last, last, last rodeo for me, buddy. I hushed him, threw me off. I miss you. Well, I miss you guys. I, I missed you at the party. Yeah. You got here and left him. You I did. Showed up a little later. Yeah, Thank Keith you. had to hang out with the dog oh. since you weren't there. That, that's a bad little dog, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some sharp teeth. <laughs> Can we tell you about our traveling <laughs> schedule? The nineteenth hearings at your house. <laughs> <laughs> You don't mind, do you? No. <laughs> I won't be home, though. <laughs> <laughs> I got is it six. One minute till. Well, I'm a torn. <laughs> huh. hmm. <clears throat> One time. You walk to work? Some days. Today? You know, I took car to do <clears throat> Thanks, Wayne. I want to stall facing you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are we no, I'm good. Want water to trundle? Turn the clicker off. Uh, water. Uh, water. Oh, I got water down here. You got water down here. Yeah. Right. No, I'm good. Something in your water? Huh? Anything in your water? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have six o'clock. Go ahead and call order. Mr. Elliott, Mr. Here. Elliott, Mr. Here. Taylor, Here. Mr. Sneed. Here. Oh, here. <laughs> Mr. Hilsinger. Here. Mr. Ballard. Here. Mr. Cunningham. Here. Okay, we have six. We have a quorum. Uh, need a motion. Make the motion for motion. executive meeting minutes. Motion. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it, 6 0. Uh, no committee reports. We'll go to new business. First item is uh, PC 32 22, Stephanie Smith Adams. Good evening. PC 32-22, the petition is Stephanie Adams Smith. S Stephanie Smith Adams uh, requested for an amended C8 ordinance. The tract is 0.84 acres in extent and located in Northeast quadrant of Bella Fountain Road and Trampy Avenue. And the site is located in the North County and the, it is highlight, outlined in red in the aerial. From this aerial, you can see the site is surrounded by residential users and it is located within the commercial strip. This is the preliminary site development plan. And this sketch plan, uh, you can see that there is a daycare center, officers and emergency, emergency respite center for foster care children. And uh, there are there is an outdoor play area and there are speed bumps connecting building and the outdoor play area. And also there is a landscaping buffer with two entrances to the site. The Spanish Lake the Town Center Master Plan 2021 suggests that this, this site is appropriate for neighborhood commercial uh, development. Therefore, the department recommends an, uh, recommends an approval for this request as uh, uh, the site is appropriate to continue the commercial use uh, and also the C8 plan commercial district procedure is appropriate and the request is in compliance with the Spanish Lake Town Center Master Plan 2021 and also these proposed users can be operated and developed 
in a manner that is uh, not detrimental to the surrounding land users. However, there are site-specific conditions limiting hours of operation for childcare and emergency, emergency respite care center for 24-7 hours, officers from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. weekdays, and also we are prohibiting overnight parking except for employees of the child care center and respite care center. And also uh, we recommend that uh, we recommend to uh, locating the outdoor play area east of the existing building. Have any motion? Uh, do you have one? Uh, I wanna uh, like to I like to vote against this. So is that your motion? That'd be my motion. For, for no. denial. Denial. Okay. Uh, we need a second. I'll second. Okay. So on the floor. Discussion. Go ahead. I mean, if you we there are so many daycares along this stretch of Bell Fountain Road. We have one directly across the street, one uh, cat a corner across the street, and one probably uh, 10 minutes uh, from this location. And uh, uh, we just don't see a need for another daycare in the in the community, especially in this location. Okay. Anyone else have any comments? Seeing none, we have a motion on the floor for denial. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Ayes have it. 6 0. And we'll go on to PC 34 22, Jessla Development. Good evening. PC 34 22, Jessla Development LLC was an a request for an amended C8 for 1.36 acres located on the southeast side of Lee May Ferry Road and so southwest side of Mel Avenue. As the commission may recall, this site is located in South County and it currently is two parcels. Um, the one closest to the corner of Lee May Ferry and Mel Avenue was a former Jack in the Box and the one more inward on the site was a auto repair center. The site is surrounded by um, two commercial shopping centers, as well as a Sam's Club with Sam's Club gas facility and another strips, uh, retail strip center down to the south. Again, here's that site outlined in red. On the preliminary site development plan that was proposed before the commission at the last public hearing, the petitioner recommended a 5,000 square foot automated tunnel, 20 vacuum stalls, eight parking stalls, one ADA stall, three stacking lanes along Mel Avenue, as well as an additional retaining wall built on the already existing retaining wall. The petitioner also did note to the commissioners uh, some encumbrances on the site that did make the um, actual site development difficult to work with. Those include th having three front yards, one along Lee May Ferry Road, one along Mel Avenue, and then along the Keller Plaza Road. And there's also cross access easements and utility easements that um, they have to keep. So in our review, the staff recommends um, a, dance, a dense landscaping along Mel Avenue to help screen the three stacking lanes, um, as well as the additional retaining wall that is being proposed. Um, per the zoning ordinance, front buffer yards in, must include one canopy tree or evergreen tree and four shrubs per 20 linear feet. Um, we are also recommending limiting the height of the lighting standards to 16 feet to um, prevent light flowing onto Lee May Ferry, Mill Avenue, and onto the residential homes in the one corner. We are also recommending that while they are not proposing a sign, um, a freestanding sign, any proposed freestanding signs must be monument in style. And then as far as architectural elevations, 
10% of the northern and southern facades shall include fenestration, decorative coping, light sconces, and awnings to be used as embellishments. Staff is recommending approval of this site as a car wash is compatible with the existing auto-oriented uses along Lee May Ferry Road. Access to the car wash is not permitted from L Avenue or Lee May Ferry Road per the six county council district community area study. Um, the proposed site achieves the following goals, assembly of parcels, utilization of special procedure zoning, you, and the use is oriented to the needs of the surrounding residential community without increasing peak flows on Lee May Ferry Road. Finally, the visual impact of this development is mitigated by the site's location above the street and with the retaining walls. Thus, the department recommends landscape plantings to help screen the new retaining wall as well as the stacking lanes. So at this time, I ask for a motion. Okay, we need a motion. I'll make a motion for approval, but I'd like to express one concern. Okay, we'll get it on the table. Yeah. Okay, Bill, go ahead. <clears throat> My concern for this is it's uh, a traffic issue because of uh, Sam. uh, yeah, Sam's Club, they back out on the Lima Ferry Road now mm -hmm. uh, where it clogs up the, the uh, uh, stoplights and everything. And this Jack in a Box never drew that much business. Uh, the other, uh, the, the other parcel there had a business similar to that. People drop off their cars and right. stuff, you know. But I'd like to see what maybe we can do to resolve that. I mean, it's a it, it's a nightmare. It blocks up a very critical intersection the way it is now. We'd be blowing many more cars through there because of what they're building. Gretchen, would you turn it to the uh, preliminary site development plan as, as presented for the commission to, to look at while they discuss? Mm -hmm. uh, Lee Mary Fair Road's at the very top. And yes. Mill yes. Avenue here. Mm -hmm. And currently, what you don't see here is this Keller Plaza Drive is really takes you back to Sam's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and they have a uh, gas filling station there. Yes. And since it's the last exit in Missouri to get that kind of gas at the rates they charge, we get a lot of Illinois visitors every day on the way to work, on the way home from work, and they really clog that thing up. I don't think you can take business away from Sam. <laughs> On the other hand, I think this business might create a problem. I don't have an answer. I just think maybe we ought to think about what can be done to help that. Thoughts, Jacob? So what I will say is that by having three stacking, so you see here at the, what would be at, at any of your all's right, um, by having three entrance level, or sort of three entry um, points, they are going to be able to, you're going to be able to stack multiple vehicles here. So it's not like there's going to just be one vehicle lane. Um, so that is, that sort of help mitigates it because that sort of helps bring the cars into the site and sort of helps stack them at this to the right here as they, as they try to get into these three bays. Um, you know, otherwise, what are the permitted, what are the permitted uses at this site right now, Gretchen? Um, I no. I think it's the range of um the C two C two the use. the existing C eight district covers the Sams and this track and this track mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so it permits a range of uses as well as a, a wholesale retail center right yeah uh, these car washes are going all over and almost every one of them is sitting on the corner. Went out by my house at Baxter and Clayton, right by a light right there, and and I've never personally had a problem getting through that light at night. They get in there and, and they move right in. They get in the car wash itself. 
might be different here, but what I can see, they've got it pretty much set up for the. They've got enough space in there for the cars at least loop in. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I guess my thought uh, was they contribute to coming in and going out. I uh, wasn't concerned about once they got on the property, uh -huh. but I was considering what's there now and either the county or somebody should take a look at how to alleviate the problems there now rather than introduce this, it backs it up all the way down Lee May Ferry Road and back up this way towards Lindbergh because they can't they can't get through that area. So do we have any idea how many cars are so stacked? So I was just looking at that. Um, it appears that with the three with the three stack, well it's two stacking lanes come that sort of branches into three. Um, that we could either a ask them to depict it clearly, although looking at it visually, it looks like you could get more than 20 vehicles um, in those in those three lanes. If you um, with this sort of normal sort of size that we would um, <coughs> depict a, a, a typical vehicle. So I think you could get a fair number of vehicles, um, you know, onto the site stacking and queuing and waiting to get into the car wash and then the car wash will naturally sort of it, it's kind of like it's a slight bottleneck and it's like you're queuing them through at a, at a consistent rate because right. the, the, in, the inside's running all at the same rate some of those folks will then um, divert themselves to the the vacuums and some of them will simply have gone wanting to get a, a wash right. so, so so it's you know some of that will be um, you know it can hold it, it can take traffic onto it faster than it necessarily lets it off. So in some ways it could operate as, um, you know, um, holding traffic on it because vehicles will be on there for a while. But it, to, to your point, uh, Commissioner Sneed, um, you know, that we do know that Lime Ferry is, is a highly trafficked arterial road. That there are some um, traffic issues um, at the site. However, for a, a, a land use question like this, you know, we can't require the petitioner to fix all of oh, those kind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fix all those. Kind of yeah. And this is a site too where um there's so much there's a significant amount of topography. This site does sit significantly higher than than Lee May Ferry Road does. Um so that's why there's only one access point into into this um proposal from Keller Plaza Drive. Probably can't stack any worse than the uh, Sam's gas station. And you know Sam's though Right, and they all want they want to co-locate. You're finding these uses co-locate with, um, particularly with Sam's Club uh, sure. gas stations. Well, I'll stay with my motion of approval. Okay. Anyone else have anything to add? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Six zero. And we'll go on to uh, PC 35-22 and 36-22 provision land development. Good evening. PC 35 and 36-22 provision land development is a request for a change in zoning from NU to R3 and for a PEU in the R3 for a 2.7 acre tract on the south side of Vance Road, approximately 80 feet east of Strawberry Ridge Drive. As you'll recall from public hearing, this site is in um, the southern portion of West County, and there you can see it outlined in red on the aerial. From this aerial, you can see some of the surrounding single family residential development. Here's the preliminary site development plan shown at public hearing. It shows 10 single family lots with common ground along Vance Road and Mombert Drive. There's also common ground in between lots five and six. There's a stormwater cleansing area on the northwest corner in the common ground and a larger stormwater cleansing and bioretention basin on the northeast corner of the site. A stormwater bypass sewer leading to an existing box culvert under Vance Road runs through the site, which is intended to collect stormwater running into the site from the neighboring properties. And they are also showing landscaping in the common ground areas. 
The department recommends dense landscaping in the common ground areas, um, including two trees and four shrubs per 20 linear feet along Vance Road and Mombert Drive, and a rustic style entrance monument to mimic the semi-rural character of the area. The department is recommending approval of this request. Um, we find that the R3 residence district zoning is compatible with the surrounding land use and the um, zoning pattern in the area, and that the PEU procedure is the appropriate mechanism to develop a single family subdivision in this area. And lastly, we are um, recommending dense landscaping throughout the common ground areas and a rustic style monument sign. Thank you. Do we have a motion for approval? We have a second. Discussion? Anyone? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 6 0. Um, no old business of any kind. So we'll go on to correspondence. First item is uh, a zoning ordinance. On marijuana facility. Yes, so we have oh, that's loud. A couple of resolutions of intent uh, for the commission tonight. So, as the commission may recall, to amend any um, regulations or permitted uses of the zoning ordinance, you must first have a public hearing, and the zoning ordinance allows the commission to adopt a resolution of intent um, to demonstrate what they're going to look into. So, we prepared a resolution of intent to open up the zoning ordinance re re regarding. Uh, comprehensive or adult use marijuana. The commission may recall that in November of this year, the, the voters of Missouri um, passed a constitutional amendment to enshrine the rights of marijuana for adults 21 years and over. For these uses, for these facilities to open and operate in St. Louis County, they need to be added into the zoning ordinance with the appropriate regulations. So we, this resolution um, would facilitate the public hearing on Monday the 19th, where we will um, have the public hearing regarding the text amendment. Okay, we just need a motion. Yes, so with a, a motion and a vote for approval, the commission would adopt this resolution to facilitate the public hearing a week from now. Okay, do we have a motion? We have a second? Second. I second. Bill? Discussion, anyone? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 6 0, and that will be a public hearing. Um, next item is a text amendment for car washes. So similarly, the, the zoning ordinance allows the commission to adopt a resolution of intent to open up the zoning ordinance for any specific land use issue. Um, the department has experienced um, an increase, and the commission would, would probably notice this as well, an increase in proposed car wash developments. Um, so we are interested in holding the public hearing to gather input, but then to also see if there's a way to uh, appropriately facilitate and regulate these uses on our commercial corridors. Okay, we need a motion. I'll make a motion. Can I have a discussion, anyone? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> would it be possible for these types of things that, uh, especially something that we won't have any preliminary information on, and I know that you all will make the presentation at the public mm -hmm. uh, Is there, I'd like to request, uh, that information prior to the public hearing. Sure. So what we were imagining presenting would be information about how we regulate car washes now, um, where these facilities exist, some background about, you know, what what we've, you know, how many petitions we've had this year um, about car washes specifically, and then perhaps a map of the existing facilities. We can send all of that information to you before the public hearing. Um, as soon as it's ready, we would send it to you this week. Have you looked at other government bodies? We haven't yet? found any specific regulations, but we know other localities are, are looking into looking this as well. At. Okay. Okay, we have a motion in a second. Any, anyone else? See none, all those in favor? Opposed? Ayes have it, 6-0. And then we'll go to uh, PC 106-94, Mayor Holmes. So this is a request for amendments to an existing PEU ordinance that governs a multiple family uh, development on the east side of Chutes Road at uh, the terminus of Tivoli Lane. So you can see this is in the mid-county um, area. 
uh, the site is outlined in red. And then on this aerial, um, you can see the, the existing buildings in the development outlined in red. And then of note is the, the existing tennis court facility at the southern portion of the site. The developer is requesting amendments to the PEU to facilitate an additional uh, multiple family building. So right now the PEU limits the development to 100 units um, in eight buildings. So the petitioner is requesting that the number of permitted uses be increased to 124 and the number of permitted buildings be increased from eight to, uh, to nine. So you can see this overall site development plan, the boxed area on the bottom, um, you'll see on the next slide is the new building, but then also I wanna point out at the top of the screen, there are also about five or six proposed parking spaces that would uh, facilitate the new, the new units as well. So here's the site plan sheet showing the proposed 24 unit um, apartment building near the Southern property line of the development. We are recommending approval of this request. Um, the underlying, underlying R6 zoning would permit up to 162 units. So this is still, um, well below what the what the zoning would permit um, by right. The petitioner in their request indicated that um, the tennis courts are not utilized and in our in our um, background and uh, research, they are not a requirement of the PEU. So there is no, um, there's no issue with removing them. Additionally, um, this is an existing multiple family development accessed through another apartment complex. So the, the, the expansion of the multiple family units we find is reasonable. And then we find that the, the requested amendments to the parking setbacks are also uh, minor. Um, for this development, if this was approved, they would have to go through the site development plan review process um, and, and make other improvements to the site as well, such as landscaping along that buffer. Okay, we need a motion. Make a motion for it. We have a second. Discussion? Go ahead. Asking for this, I know it's mayor, but mayor was. Mayor developed the original. McBride is proposing the new building. Mm -hmm. And now, mm -hmm. uh, additionally, the setback where it adjoins the residence is, is that being changed? The changes are to the setbacks um, to, to facilitate this building. So that setback is being modified. That one is, and what is it today and what are they? I would need to open up um, the item, but I I don't know off the top of my head. Um, it's minor though. They aren't proposing parking in that setback. It would just be the building between the, the former tennis court and the abutting um, residences. So they're proposing parking on the right-hand side of the building on this layout, right? Right, parking, new parking on either side of the new residence, the residential building. Well, it'd be nice to know that. Because those residences will be Sure, I can, I mean, I can step away for a second. I'll pull it up. I say we can either let her uh, go or we can hold it until and come back to it. At the I can go to the computer in the back the end and, and pull it up. Yeah, okay. You can still take care of this meeting. Right, yeah. right, right. Uh, let me go look real quick right now or come back to this at the end of the correspondence. What works best for the commission? Would you like to, whatever for a second? For Why don't you let me go. go look real fast, Mel. Do we want to go on then? Or do you want to wait? We'll wait for her. She's very good. I very much do. You did an excellent job on that. This is a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Where is your community? Um, so, so this, oh, oh, right, right, right. Where will it go out? So it will be posted in the county and, um, but because there's no site, there's no, like no site to put signs up, right. um, we're putting it out on social media. Um, and so we have, but that's kind of the, the county's website, but yeah, when, whenever you have text amendments, that's the hard one because there's no, 
there's no signs to go put it out at the site. So we, we sort of put it out in the county and, and it gets picked up sometimes by, by local media. somehow circulate that to the adjoining property owners? Or? Well, if it's for a specific site, yes, but for like the, the, the resolutions of the two, car wash and the, and the comprehensive, because that's a text amendment that affects all of unincorporated St. Louis County. What social media are you going on? So the county uses, we use Facebook, we use Facebook uh, and Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> yep. Okay. So for now. Yep. Okay. Um, apologies. So the, the, the setback from the southern property line, which is the one you're referring to, was 40 and it is proposed to be modified to 35, so a five foot difference. And then to facilitate that parking in the northern part, it's a couple of feet. Thank you, Mel. Sure. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, anyone else have anything to add? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 6 0. And we'll go on to PC 93 95, Kevin Aid and Bill Giannino. PC 93-95, Kevin Eight and Bill Giannino is a C8 ordinance governing 2.2 acres on the west side of Telegraph Road, north of Rollins Drive. This is a request to amend the permitted uses to include vehicle washing. This site is in South County. It's on Telegraph Road. There you can see it outlined in red. It's um, a little bit south of the intersection with uh, Forder and Pottle. This is the um, preliminary site development plan um, submitted by the petitioner. Uh, north is up, so Telegraph Road is on the right side of this plan, um, and it shows a, a tunnel car wash with vehicle stacking um, and, and parking along the front. This, um, for the commission's uh, reference, this is the preliminary site development plan um, that was uh, presented when this site went to public hearing in 1995. Um, it also shows a, a car wash on the site. Um, it's a one bay car wash. Um, it's highlighted in red here. It's at the rear of the site behind, um, a, I believe it was a convenience store. The department is recommending denial of this request. Um, the, uh, the original request was for a car wash in conjunction with a convenience store and other auto related um, uses. And uh, the department finds that a tunnel car wash is more intense than any car wash previously proposed for the site. Um, and we find that a new public hearing would be appropriate for this request. Yeah, well, it's not gonna be a convenience store. It was going to be a Bill Giannino who owns the restaurant mm -hmm. build a diner there. In the in the um, our letter of recommendation, yeah, they they mentioned a sit down restaurant as well as convenience store and and vehicle service right. for all the requested uses at the time. Okay, we need a motion, Gary. I make a motion to deny this pending a new public hearing. I second. We have a second. I will abstain on this one. Uh, so, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 5-0. And we will go on to uh, PC 88-94 Southtown Investments. PC 88-94 Southtown Investment uh, requested for an amended C8 for an uh, 7.94 acres site and located uh, in north side of Lindbergh Boulevard, approximately 900 feet southwest of Union Road. The site is located in the South County and outlined in red on the odd area. The, depart the de department recommends an approval for this request uh, as the current request is to construct a building addition to increase the cross floor area by 13,000 square feet uh, in addition, the proposed site modifications also included uh, the demolition of 16,000 square feet uh, building, which will decrease the gross floor area of the buildings of the site by 3,000 square feet. Uh, the uses uh, permitted by this amended C8 plan commercial district shall be contained in not more than two buildings, 
not to exceed 60,000 square feet in gross floor area. The request is in compliance with the setback requirements and other conditions stated in the governing ordinance. Okay, we need a motion. We have a second. I'll second. Okay, it's on the table. Go ahead. Pull that back and show the area. Should we don't we're on that site plan? So, so the um, the main building where the 7127 label is, that's where the addition is proposed. Okay. Okay. And then the building proposed to be just demolished is the longer rectangular building towards the frontage on Lindbergh. So they would keep that that sort of square building mm -hmm. and then add on to the largest building. So there's a net reduction overall in, in, in building space, but um, they want to add some additional modern space to this larger building at the rear um, and then remove the, the right. one of this, the This up. C8 oddly prescribed specific limitations for three specific buildings. So we're recommending instead of having building one at X square footage, building two at X, no more than two buildings totaling no more than 60,000 square feet. Anyone else have anything to add? Questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 6 0. And we'll go to uh, PC 33 22, Taylor Bell. PC 33 22, parallel infrastructure requested for a uh, conditional user permit in R2 residential re districts. The track is 1.4 acres in extent and located in east side of Lindbergh Boulevard, approximately 88 feet north of Eddy Road. You can see the site is located in Mid County and outlined uh, in red in the area. On uh, November 14th, uh, petitioner requested a postponement pr prior to the public hearing and subsequently submitted a letter requesting withdrawal without prejudice. So the department uh, approves, uh, the, the department recommends approves of the request for a withdrawal without prejudice. Okay, do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 6 0. Then we've got PC 111 85 Mills Properties. PC 111 85 Mills Property is a request for an amended C8, an amendment to C8 Ordinance 12,500 for 10.01 acres located on the northeast side of Lindbergh Boulevard, southeast of Lee May Ferry Road. The petitioner is requesting an amendment to the ordinance to allow for all C2 shopping district uses. This location is in South County and it is outlined in red. Um, its neighbor is the Home Depot and other commercial uses. Staff is recommending approval. Um, the current request is to allow for all C2 shopping district uses. Um, and it would, their reasoning was to allow for more flexibility in finding tenants. Um, staff would note that m we would recommend C2 shopping district uses that are permitted without a conditional use permit be allowed at the site and that marijuana facilities would not be appropriate at the site. Okay, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve it. We have a second. Second. Discussion. Anyone? The uh, currently it's C eight. Yes, it is currently C eight. Um, and previous tenants at this location have been. C2 uses such as churches and daycare facilities. So that's why we are recommending the approval of the C2 because there have been previous C2 uses at this site. Sure, and it's also been, it's had off, it's had a lot of offices. offices it has yes. some state offices there. Sure, mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah, 
familiar with the property. I just, I guess I'm a little anxious about that we change it from C8 to C2. So it would, it would just be an amendment to the C8 ordinance to allow the C2 shopping district uses? Right. So right. instead of the C, right now, so the C8. Yeah, it stays C8. The, yes. the zoning would, but yes, sir. Can have C2. But they would have, and we're recommending only the permitted C2 uses in the zoning ordinance without a conditional use permit. Point, I don't. I need some clarification. So, yeah. so some C8 ordinance only permit, you know, offices, retail, and, you know, such. They list every use. C8 ordinance can also say this C8 shall permit, you know, vehicle sales and the whole range of C2 permitted uses. So the zoning still C8. All of the other conditions of development are C8, but that gives them the flexibility to, to propose any use that's permitted in the C2 but still meeting the C8 conditions of development in terms of lot size and setbacks and, and our other requirements. So right now this only permits um, childcare center office uh, and then there's a really specific state of Missouri sort of office that operates there. But if the commission and the council recommend that all C2 uses be permitted, they could do retail um, medical office. The purpose is they have a medical office tenant who wants to go into the site. So if the commission does find they want to limit the uses and not recommend that all C2 permitted uses be um, permitted. That is, is an option as well. But the underlying zoning would still be C8 with all of the existing controls on the site. I think that's a, uh, uh, a fairly significant development there. And I would be a little concerned given such a range of C2 that we end up with uh, I mean, we want to keep that a viable uh, facility. Okay, so I I would try I would sense uh, providing a little uh, direction other than just broadly saying C two. I mean, I think it would be appropriate to we could revise this document to add office, retail, medical office, sort of the you know, the main shopping district uses. Um, and then they would have the opportunity if they had a specific tenant that wasn't in that range, they could come back and make the request again. Um, but the, the uh, yeah. main tenant they're looking for is, a, is to, to lease out to is a medical office right. user. Uh, I'd ask to make a motion. Yeah, I'd like to send a motion and, and put a motion back in. I had that Mr. Elliott made the motion. I'll amend the motion to okay. what she said. So the, the commission is is retail, retail office, office and medical office. Medical so office. Is, so they would still be permitted the child care center and the other sort of institutional use, but we will revise it to to add medical office, retail, and general office specifically. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. okay? So I think we still need. You, the vote. You're good. Okay. Anyone else have anything to add? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Ice have it 6 0. And we'll go to PC uh, 16 15, Lita Ventures. So this is a request for an extension of time to submit a site development plan uh, for a little bit of background. Anytime the commission adopts it, it recommends and the county council adopts a C8 ordinance, the developer is required to submit a site development plan to the commission for their approval within 18 months of the ordinance adoption. So for this request, um, you know, the, the petition was from 2015. Um, I'll get into it. So this is the uh, the former Spanky's restaurant on, on Concord Village Avenue. In 2015, it was the uh, subject of a request for a C8 district to permit vehicle inventory storage, as well as um, vehicle detailing in the existing building. <clears throat> so you can see the site outlined here in red. This is affiliated with the, the Lita dealership there, which is located on, on multiple parcels to the south of the site. So for review, uh, after the C8 ordinance, was, uh, the C8 district was established, the developer did submit a site development plan uh, for interdepartmental review. They did receive several um, common letters and did do several resubmissions. In 2018, before a site plan was approved, the property was cited for operating without an approved site development plan and without an occupancy permit. 
February of 2019, the department sent um, a comment letter, a fifth comment letter with, with necessary revisions and the site plan was subsequently never resubmitted. In 2020, the developer did pull a permit to demolish the existing building on the site. And then in 2021, they were cited again for continuing to operate without coming into zoning compliance or without an occupancy permit. <coughs> Excuse me. So the petitioner is asking for an extension of time to resubmit a site development plan for review and for this commission's approval. You can see here um, the conditions they're proposing, the removal of the building, additional landscaping, for use of the site as, as an inventory lot. The department is recommending denial. Um, in the three years that have passed since the issuance of the last comment letter, um, no site plan was resubmitted, but there have been significant alterations to the site um, that are not reflected on an, on an approved site development plan anywhere. The petitioner did indicate that um, the project manager did fall ill and there was a, a lack of sort of transfer of the project, which is their rationale for asking uh, for the extension. But the department does not find that that due cause has been demonstrated and is recommending denial of the extension. Is this the same owner through those dates that you showed on the previous screen? It has been the same owner the entire time. I would have to agree with you. I would like to make a motion for denial. I have a motion for denial. Second. We have a second. You got a second? Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Six zero, and we'll go on to site plans. You want to do these together or any objections? Gretchen, I think they're fine just doing them together. So if the, if uh, Mr. Helsinger, if you'd like to, she can just she can just uh, breeze through these while you guys have your motion. Okay, we have got PC sixty four dash ninety six and PC fifty four dash ninety one. Uh, need a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a second. 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 Discussion. Seeing on all those in favor. Aye. Opposed. Ayes have it six zero. And she's off the hook, right? Yeah. <laughs> she gets one tonight. So I know. Sorry. We'll go to the good of the order. So up, up in front of you right now is the Q1 schedule as proposed. Um, this is in accordance with the commission's bylaws, which say that the executive meeting will be the first Monday of the month and the public hearing will be the second. As always, if there is the need for an additional meeting, the commission can call for an, uh, an additional meeting. Um, one thing I do, I know we have a meeting next week, but one thing that the commission will need to think about for January is um, the nominating committee will need to meet um, and we will need a new secretary. But then I think Jacob has something for the good. Sure, I think I just I want to make sure is the commission comfortable with this with your Q1 with your tentative Q1 schedule. Okay. Okay. I see. Yeah. When uh, when we last discussed meetings mm -hmm. as part of commission, uh, I think most, if not all. Uh, the commissioners wanted to go back to the first Monday, and I think this probably accomplishes that, it, unless the county is closed. Right, 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 right. There are a bunch of holidays. Yeah. But I would, I would suggest the commission consider having, having typically having the public meeting. Uh, Two weeks after after that, like the third, the third, the third mm -hmm. week, that that does a couple of things. It it provides by having the by having the executive meeting January second second or the first Monday, we can uh, present uh, decisions to uh, council council so that it moves it along. But secondly, it gives the, the uh, all of us an opportunity to get the information and study it for the uh, upcoming public hearing. Because I think most of us thought that the timing of getting that is really uh, very difficult to. Uh, 
look at all that many times. I know a lot of us go out and look at these properties and then we can communicate by asking the appropriate questions at the meeting if we have that time to do that. I think we do a better job of, of our jobs. And so I'm putting that out to the commissions. Any comments? Fine with this. Bill, what do you think? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to cut you out of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you're saying you don't care? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> so staff can go back and um, change it, of course. Well, January is already kind of weird. January is sort of a wash. Um, <laughs> January is kind of weird. February is kind of weird. But yes. you can, you know, starting in March. Um, it also, you know, and what I will is that, um, and, and Mel pointed it out to me, is that by doing executive meeting the first Monday and public hearing the second Monday is in alignment with the with the commission's bylaws. Um, so I think that there is a, a future opportunity. And it's been almost a year um, when the commission had some conversations about um, looking at your bylaws again. So this may be a good opportunity to just sort of, you know, crack open a little bit on that again and see whether the commission at, you know, sometime in the next few months wants to look at its bylaws again and sort of get back into alignment with what its, with, with what its goals. Um, uh, so its operations are with, in line with its goals. Yeah. Um, I'm a little confused because in the modern months and years that we've been, Doing this, uh, we have it ended up we're having uh, two meetings: an uh -huh. executive and and a public. Uh, the bylaws have not been updated for a long time. Long time, mm -hmm. and yet we we had meetings every week, sometimes mm -hmm. during the month. Sure, but we were out so, of so yeah. How how does the bylaws? relate to us having it the second week so you want me to be honest during the pandemic and even up up until that i actually didn't, didn't know, know where, we didn't bylaws. know we didn't know where your bylaws were um <laughs> i mean add, adding on additional meetings <laughs> is permitted we found, for right, the bylaws we found them. <laughs> but in terms <laughs> wait the bylaws i think are you know clear that the commission can add additional yes. meetings but Makes in sense. terms of of having a schedule that doesn't adhere to your bylaws i mean you're not right. i don't and think it's an ordinance violation but no, absolutely um, not and so it's, it's, that's, it's, it's we want to we want to align with the document right. ideally or align the document with, with what, what want. you want right yes one thing so just to make sure i follow so are you, Mr. Sneed, suggesting that the executive meeting moves from the first Monday or the public hearing moves from the second Monday yes, to, that, the to, to the third? Okay, I just yeah. want to make sure I follow yeah. that. The executive meeting, I think, works best for getting information quickly to the council, and, and the other is providing enough time to re review this information before we have the public meeting. Sure. Okay. We probably haven't followed those in years. That is probably they are from 1987. They are from the last of the 1980s. 1980s. Met almost every week. consistently. Right. And this is, I, I mean, and this is as um, you know, I would counsel the commission that I, you know, and I, and I, you'll hear me re, you know, re, sort of echoing what we said this spring, which was, um, you know, we think the time is ripe to look back at your at your bylaws and get and, and have that document in alignment with how you want your operations. Mm -hmm. And it helps staff. It helps us um, if to, to follow your bylaws, just in case there are ever, God forbid, and it happens. So, of course, is if there's ever any sort of legal challenge to any of your decisions, um, being in operation or in alignment with your bylaws is, is always beneficial. And, for, it, for our, for the and additionally, um, the public hearing guidelines, I think, are informed by the bylaws. Yes. So in terms of how long does a certain speaker get get to speak, what order did they speak in, that all uh, originates from the bylaws as well. And that's not for tonight, but I think sure. that's something for the commission to consider in the in the coming months. Well, if we do change the bylaws, I have a request that we change the repetition that some of these people do. I mean, every single one just that's when the hammer comes down. And and uh, well, Wayne tells them, you know, don't be repetitive. Yep. But then invariably, when they think what my wife says, speaker one, <laughs> speaker two, and speaker three all say the same thing. 
And then he's the bad guy if he does put the hammer down. Right. That's our fault. We used to enforce that. I mean, we yeah. used to really stop that. Mm -hmm. On the time clock. Mm -hmm. right. Two minutes up, bang. No, that's I, our fault. I'm not talking about the time. I'm talking about just saying the same thing to person. Repetitive. Right. Avoid right. 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 repetitive or secondary I remarks. I agree with you a thousand percent. But did you find something? So um, people come here to express their views. And I think defending what we did in the past, I think most of us looked at it as we give them the opportunity to speak to us mm -hmm. and to give them their views. And I don't know how you can cut them off when that is why they're here. They've made effort to get here and I, but I agree with you a thousand percent, but how do we do that without, without, um, the public thinking that we don't want to listen. Yeah, the bill's right. And it, I've always thought it's, it's probably one of the few times yeah. people come into contact sure. yeah. with their county government. And even though they don't get what they want necessarily, at least they can go home and say, they listen to me and uh, sure. And again, and, it, and it, then it depends on, you know, what, what, what the atmosphere is. I mean, if you don't have right. a lot of, you know, petitions, then, you, you know, you can kind of be flexible, you know, but you can limit to two minutes. If, if oh, the, crowd, you, the, the know, amount of time, I think can be more stringently right. sure. uh, right. taken care of, but you can't stop the rep repetition. Okay. So do we think it would be, uh, it would make matters worse? If we put a big digital clock up there. So the the council actually runs a clock during their public comment. Um, there's a there's we've not used it, but there's a tool in the the agenda software that will count down a clock. But even before then, they would take an iPad with a timer, set it at three minutes, and just set it right here for the speaker, speaker to see. Speaker to see. Those are all. I mean. Again, those I didn't mean to sort of crack open a can of worms there because because I think that that's a I think it's a I think that it, it's helpful for the for the commission to, to have some of these conversations about how open do we want our meetings to be because that lays out how you want your bylaws to be written because that is that those are the guardrails for how your or how your meetings operate. Um, so you know, circling back. Sorry, if you were going to change, I just wanted to circle back to this schedule one more time. So the only thing you're expecting to see is March changed, February and, and yes. January. Yeah, we're not going to change. Yeah, January, okay. and February are pretty. You know, three minutes uh, is a long time. Mm -hmm. I know personally from being in the ring, boxing, three minutes is a long time, an eternity. <laughs> And somebody's hitting you, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I didn't know that about you. Learn something new every day. Some interesting stories I made, but you're right? Um, so I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, you know, waste the uh, the commission's time, but I do want to talk a little bit about the American Planning Association. Um, so if there are any commissioners who are unaware of what the American Planning Association is, it is the um, it is the professional organization for urban planners. So all so Mel and I are um, certified urban planners through the American Planning Association um, and all the staff, um, the staff planners are members of the American Planning Association. So it offers education about planning topics um, and, and all kinds of stuff. And so we were looking at the cost to enroll the commissioners, each of you as members of the American Planning Association in 2023, and the cost looks pretty affordable for the department. <laughs> um, so I wanted to bring that up to your attention that I think that we are going to um, enroll each of you as members of the American Planning Association, um, which would mean that you have uh, additional educational um, things would be popping up in your inboxes, just, you know, sorts of, articles and stuff about hot topics in urban planning. Um, additionally, always looking forward to, um, you know, maybe there's a world in the future where commissioners come to, um, you know, state conference to the, the state planning conference um, to learn about planning issues. Um, so I want to crack open that nut and sort of give the commission more educational opportunities and, and sort of get get more plugged into the planning um, planning world outside of this commission. And so I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Um, but for the big, oh, go ahead. Uh, I mean, can that hurt us? So. 
No, absolutely not. I just wanted I just wanted to bring that to your all's attention. Um, and I'm going to walk down to the podium because the big issue or the big thing for tonight is thanking a longtime servant. Uh, you got to wait till you're at the microphone so all the online viewers can hear you. Do you want this guy? Okay. We have a um, dedicated servant to the people of St. Louis County uh, and Mr. William Ballard. Um, and with 26 years of service to the people of St. Louis County, um, this department and this government are extremely, extremely thankful for um, everything that you have done for us. Me personally, I have to say that you were always a smiling face for the last eight years. When I was a brand new planner, Mr. Ballard, um, it was always a pleasure um, to, to, to see you and chat with you. Um, and this department is extremely, extremely grateful um, for the service and, and the counsel that you have given to all of us. Um, and um, Dr. Page has um, provided a proclamation and I'd like to read it uh, to you and into the record this evening. Proclamation of St. Louis County, Missouri. Whereas William Ballard, Bill, has served St. Louis County with distinction for over 26 years and is now retiring from the St. Louis Planning Commission. And whereas Bill has served in an exemplary fashion throughout his time on the Planning Commission, which began in April of 1996 and was appointed to the Planning Commission by Buzz Westfall and carried on through four additional county executives, four directors of planning, two acting directors of planning, and eight commission members, and Whereas Bill started as a member of the Planning Commission and was then elected secretary of 20, in 2013 and has been serving in that capacity since. And whereas Bill has seen many zoning petitions, site development plans, and architectural elevations in his career and his many years of experience have helped to achieve the goal of improving communities and developments within St. Louis County, uh, with St. Louis County's residents in mind. And whereas throughout his incredible years of service, Bill was diligent in attending executive meetings and public hearings to determine good land use and planning practices for St. Louis County. And whereas Bill is an avid gardener who would share his bounty with fellow commissioners and planning staff and is supported by his family and a network of friendships that he's developed over the years and will now be able to spend more valuable time with his wife and family. Now, therefore, Sam Page, St. Louis County Executive does hereby proclaim December 12, 2022 as William Ballard Day in St. Louis County and wishes him and his family all the best. So, Mr. Ballard, you will be deeply, deeply missed on this commission. You will be missed by staff, but I promise you will still get the party invites. Mm. So, <laughs> this is goodbye, but not farewell. So... Or is it the other way around? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Allen. Thank you. Like to say, Mr. I just want to say that it's been a pleasure working with all you guys and ladies and gentlemen and uh, the lawyer. Only it's been a few months, but uh, <laughs> glad to see you over there and keep us out of trouble. Right? I'll keep these guys out of trouble. And I can laugh at them now. But anyways, uh, I missed one of the directors. I only had three on my paper. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I started, June Fowler was the uh, director of planning, I believe, at that time. Of course, Glenn. Glenn. Yeah. And, you know, now, uh, I guess you're appointed now. Yeah. <laughs> but you've done a good job doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to miss all you guys. And Monday nights now, I can watch football games. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks a lot for everything. Thank you, thank Bill. Thank you. And I think the county's in good hand with you guys, especially. You too. We're proud of you guys. And I want to echo everything Jacob said. It, it it's really been a pleasure, and and we're going to miss you. So Thank you. we'll subscribe you to the public notices so you know when the meetings are. Yeah. You can come as a citizen. I won't get these cell phone calls in the morning when I'm exercising. Evelyn can just call you just to say <laughs> hey. Okay, Mr. Pollard, would you be available for expert witness testimony? <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> So I think after we adjourn, it'd be nice if we could get a picture of you and your wife and Jacob uh, okay. down here with your right. proclamation. With that, we need a motion to adjourn. And Bill, we're going to let you make your make last motion. motion. Wow. The last thing I'll do. Do we have a second to second. discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it 6 0, and we're adjourned. Let the photo shoot begin. Make the adjournment. Give me a second. <laughs> no, one, no one gets my gavel. <laughs> 
I had a few times. You weren't here. Doug wasn't here. Okay, you want to put your hand? Yeah.